All right, guys. So welcome to Everything Business. And oh my word, the 2023 accounts paper. All right. I'll be doing a reaction video. Now note that this is a reaction video. I won't be doing the answers or I won't be giving the answers just yet. Um because this is a reaction video. So unlike last year, though, what I will do is I will upload the answers occasionally, right, Um, to the various questions. I'm not going to wait too long. So by the end of the week, right, you should have a couple of questions that you can um look at the answers, all right? But I want to talk about the paper, this paper this year, right? Um, I want to tell you what I think about it. I want to hear what you think about it. So you can leave a, a comment, right? in the comment section, all right? I don't want this video to be long, so let's get right into it. As you can see, we have the, the paper right there, all right? I'm gonna give you my overall feedback on the paper in a little while, all right? So let's look at this. The first question, for me, the first question was, you know, pretty okay. Um. So the first question, right, is asking you to identify an accounting software program that can be used, right? Um, I don't know if many persons would have known that, right? But I think that some of you guys, as it relates to accounting, you know, you 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 know, you could answer that. That's a one more question. Identify one skill a bookkeeper should possess, right? And I think that is a fairly easy question as well. You should be able to to answer that question comfortably, right? Um. Then it says the following table shows transactions that were omitted from the books. And so on the next page, right, on the next page over here, you would see where they have a journal that they're asking you to enter up the information in the journal. Very, very, very simple, right? Five marks for that, right? And then they ask a source document that is used um, when you are doing a returns, right, for April 19. Right. And so you should have known that. Right. That, that's a very simple. What should I say? Simple question. One C move on by talking about. Um, uh, it's a payroll question, actually. Right. So we see where they they fuse um, books of original entry with payroll. Didn't expect that one, but they did. Right. So. They're asking you to calculate um, Leela's monthly gross earnings, right? It's just three marks, right? And um, they, 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 they give the annual salary, um, you know, they give the amount of money for the pay increase. Then they ask you to calculate the salary, right? That is, you know, pretty simple for us as a, a, an average accounting student, right? Um should be able to calculate that. I don't think it has it had any difficulty in that one, right? Then for Samson, right, they ask you to calculate Samson's gross wage for the week, right? After they give you how much he's paid per hour, they they gave you um um his contracted work work hours per week, and they also gave you how much he worked. Right. So you are to calculate the overtime and calculate the overtime rate and all of that. Right. Again, this is pretty simple stuff. Right. An average accounting student would be able to do that. Right. Yeah. So nothing too difficult as yet. Right. So question one, still on question one. Um, they're asking you to calculate the gross pay for Dolly, which again is pretty simple. Right. Um, pretty simple. Uh, the, the thing about this question, though, for Dolly, that they, they say that they said you should calculate um, the commission is 2% of the amount by which the revenue of the business exceed 40000 So I, I realize that this part may trip up some persons, right, in that you have to use the amount that is exceeding 40000 So it is 58. So obviously, you know that it's eight, it exceeded 40000 by $18,000, right? So... Yeah, as I said before, I'm not going to do the answers, right? But I'm just doing a review. Um, state two types of compulsory deductions that are normally de deducted from employees' gross pay. Any question that, any payroll question, this this part, this particular question comes on it, 
if you have looked at any past paper question as it relates to payroll, then this would be there, right? So that should be pretty easy. So all in all, question one, um, though it was a bit shocking to see them, them, them they throw the payroll along with the books of original entry, it was a bit shocking for me, right? But it is it was doable, right? An average accounting student should be getting 20 out of 20, average, right? So if you are above average, then it's, this should be a breeze for you. This should probably take you like maybe 20 minutes to cover, all right? So yeah, so question one, in terms of difficulty level, I would say question one would be uh, six out of 10. It's not that difficult, all right? So we'll move on to question two now, right? And there are some shocks in, in this paper this year now, as we'll, as we'll come to it, all right? So question two, they give you a cash book here, right? And then they're asking some questions. And I remember saying before, in a, in a, in a tip that I, I, I gave, when I say, know the concepts, know the concepts, guys. I realize now that CXC is not only just testing the, the practical, they are testing the concepts. So you are given a cash book here. And then guess what? They're asking you to tell what the balance BD in the cash column means, what the balance BD in the bank column means, right? Um, part B, to talk about, um, you know, whether or not they receive or allow that discount. All of these things, you know, are concepts that you have to know. Um, B2, state two reasons why the check may be dishonored concepts that you need to know, right? State reasons, say two reasons for the entries on the 28th of April, right? Which is a contra entry, right? So that's what you should have had. You should have had contra entry for that one. I don't want to give the answers. Every year I keep doing that. I keep, you know, doing the review and giving the answers. I don't want to give the answers, right? You'll get the answers in another video later on. So once 2C rather, 2C is asking for you to calculate the percentage discount, right? Pretty simple mathematics, right? Right there. Um, question 2C2 two, suggests a reason for you know the refund, right? And that's again a, a concept, um, a theory question, right? Calculate the yearly interest, right, that you would have to pay. Right, and, and that is very simple again. It's question two for me. Question two it contains a lot of math, as a matter of fact. Question one contains a lot of math, right? So if you're good at math, because you do do payroll in math, right? And so if you are good at math, then question one and two should be easy, right, for you. All right, so you calculate the the interest on the bank loan, right? And they would have given you the amount that you should use to calculate the interest, right? Um, and then it asks you to balance off the cash book. I mean, like, really, this is very easy, right? So that's pretty straightforward, all right? So we move on to question 2D, where they are asking you now to complete right complete the accounts for k lima and the discount allowed right accounts this is again very simple books of original entry right here again All right so out of 20 so this question again uh, there's definitely nothing difficult about this right this question i would give the difficulty level of four it's very easy right a, a grade 10 account student could probably do this right so this is very easy all right, so question number three. Question number three is a manufacturing account, right? Um, 3A asks you to identify two types of direct costs and two types of indirect costs. Simple, that's pretty simple, right? Question 3B, it asks you to, 3BI asks you to do, do a manufacturing account and they give you, they draw it up for you, here it is. Question 3B, I say you do the manufacturing account there, right? It's pretty simple, pretty basic, right? Um, as, a, as you know, manufacturing account is simply about adding up costs. So that should not be a problem for you. An average accounting student should be able to do this, right? Like, yeah, it's not difficult. This is very simple, right? Then they ask you to calculate the net sales figure. I mean, like, I couldn't believe I saw that, right? Where you have the sales figure minus the sales returns figure and you get the net sales. Yeah, that's very easy. That's one mark. 
and then they ask you to um the accounting principles so you would have to talk about the concepts here right the accounting concepts um and in my i'm about to give out the answer i was about to give out the answer but i'm not going to so in my video you will see what the answers to those are right the accounting concepts would go right there so that's basically question three right um I think difficulty level is probably about six or yeah it doesn't it, it's not really difficult i think a, a, a fair enough accounting student if you have been doing well in your in your accounts class passing your exams in the 70s and 80s right well in the 60s and 70s and 80s you should be able to pass right these three questions value 60 marks and if you maximized you know all of the things in these three questions and you would have already passed this paper so all in all the first three questions pretty manageable right um the only shock that i got was the payroll coming in the first question that like i've never seen that right so that's a shocker but let's move on to another part of the paper that may pose a shock to some persons like this part now this part is a shock to me where they're asking for the production budget no no listen to me it's the first time um this is on the this is on the syllabus but it's very new to the syllabus right and it's the first time a question um of this nature is 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 coming right they had cash flow recently but then the production budget has never come so so it's not like you guys had a chance to look back at past papers or teachers had a chance to look back at past papers to say okay all right you can prepare about prepare for this in that way or, or another right for a June exam, it's the first time. And so I can understand why young people or why students would have been thrown by this question. So this question was a shocker for me, right? And truth be told, it's not a hard, it's not a difficult question. And when I do my answer, when I do my answer paper, you will realize that it's fairly simple. It's not a difficult, it's not a difficult paper. It's not a difficult question, right? Um, yeah, it's not a difficult question. It's pretty, pretty simple. Right, so there, you know, I've worked it out already. Right, it's pretty simple. So, so when I when I do the workout and I show you, you will realize that it's very very simple. Then the next question, part four, a two, ask you to calculate um the markup, right, which is pretty basic, right. Then we move on to the second part of um question number four, which is which is very easy in my estimation, right. So they give you some errors here. They even give an example of how to, the effect that the error would have on non-current assets and the profit at the end of the year, right? So you need to do, do B and C, right? Talk about what the effect that the error would have. And you just put a little tick there. I think that was very simple, very easy. Then you identify two payments um, that they can use, right? When, when, you know, for tools, purchase and credit. I mean, like, that's like, an easy giveaway give for two marks, right? Yeah, All right. So we move on now to question, the remainder of question four, four C, control account. So they, they put in right there, a correction or error question, right? I want I want if you realize that, yeah, right? A correction of, well, it's not really a correction or error. This question here, question four B, it's not really a correction of error per se. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Is a correctional error because this is where correctional error is where we talk about the effect um you know that an error have on profit and non-current assets yeah so that's a correction of error question and then part c is a control account question right they're asking about the uses of control account in the first part there two marks easy two marks right um then the, the bottom part again i mean they didn't even ask you to do the control account i was like this is easy, right? So out of this question, right, let's say you did not do the production budget. So you would have lost six marks. So you should be able to pass this question just the same enough. And that is how CXC does it. If they are going to send a new topic, right, then they, they are not going to allocate a lot of marks to it because it's new to the syllabus. Not many persons would have been prepared or even though you should be prepared, right? But truth be told, a lot of teachers, um, we, you know, did not get to prepare students on that, right? So that's what, you should be able to at least get 14 out of these 20 marks. So you should be able to pass this question, right? Even with that production budget question there. Then the last question is a cooperative um, account question, right? 
corporative account question. Um, I haven't seen a corporative question in probably a year or two. Right. So it, this was a surprise. I was really hoping that this question, uh, this topic wouldn't come. But hey, here it is. Now, I remember telling you guys, whenever you see a topic, the first thing you do, you read through the question. Right. So not because, you, you know, you may not be prepared with cooperative account. I think you should have looked at this paper, looked at this question and realized that the first four marks, actually them asking you to make some adjustments, which is what you do in income statement. So it's kind of linked with income statement. Right. Nothing peculiar as yet to cooperative accounts specifically like that, right? So if you would have looked at your partnership and your company and all these things with appropriation account, then this would be easy to make the adjustment. So the first four marks for me, right, in my estimation, it's just to make the adjustments which they would have given you right here. It should be simple, all right? All right. Then the next part of question five, is asking you to do the appropriation account. Now, I know if you if you don't have any knowledge about cooperative accounts, then probably you would probably lose the three marks there. All right. So let's say you lose that three marks right there. All right. Then the next part is asking for your statement of financial position. Now, now listen to me, guys. This is 13 marks. You know how a statement of financial position is. It really doesn't change. Right. Whether it's a cooperative or it's a partnership or it's a manufacturing account or it's a company, there are certain things that are, you know, common to all statement of financial positions. You know, you have your your your, your, your non-current assets or your fixed assets, you have your current assets, you have your liabilities, you have your um long-term liabilities, you have your finance by capital, whatever, whatever. All of that should be right here. So you could find a way to put it here, even if you don't do cooperative accounting in your course, right? If a teacher didn't prepare on cooperative accounting, this is a statement of financial position, irrespective of the fact that it's a cooperative question. So you should at least be able to pick up, let's say you get half the mark of the 13. So let's say you get, say, six, right? So that's six and the four around the front, right? Um, That would be what, 10. So you would end up still past this question. So that's the end of the, the exam. All in all, guys, my overall estimation of this paper this paper was not a difficult paper because you could have already passed the paper from the first three questions. In my estimation, a paper is not difficult if you are able to pass the question comfortably in the first three. You didn't have to do a lot of brain work, right? You just need to know your theories and you just need to know your math. So if you're not good at math, then this, pro this paper would be a problem for you, right? But if you are okay at math, right? And you know your theories, um, your concepts, then this paper would be fairly manageable. Overall, this paper, I would say that this paper is a six out of 10 in terms of difficulty because it was not that difficult. And so I expect that a lot of persons should be passing accounts this year. Let me know what you think, right? Leave a comment um, in the comment section below and in the same breath, begin working on your paper one. Well, good.